Hey guys, Shashank Kalanithi here, and on this channel, I teach you guys how to break into the world of data science and analytics using real code examples and showing you guys how I code things live. A very common question I get is, how do I start a data science project? And I'm going to show you guys how I start my projects uh, by going through a uh, example with like real code and a real data set and showing you the thought process I have of whenever I want to start my own project. Although today's data was provided to me by Bright Data, the leading online supplier of web data, you can do and follow along with these steps using any data you find. Uh, but Bright Data was nice enough to provide this awesome Instagram data where they scraped basically all of Instagram for uh, specific data relating to businesses. So we're going to be looking at business accounts in Instagram. That's all I know about the data. Um, I have looked at it a little bit in the past, but the idea is to show you guys the actual process we go through in order to actually get a data science project off the ground. Comment below at the end of the video if you have any ideas of where we can take this project next. If this video gets enough views, then we can always create a follow-up where I show you guys the final tool that I eventually build out using this Instagram data. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So we have this data from Bright Data, which um, what they do is they are able to scrape large amounts of data off the internet and even make custom scrapers for you. That way you can get data that wouldn't normally be very easy to get. Um, for anyone that knows, has been following the channel for a while, you'll know that I've built Instagram scrapers before and uh, they're not the easiest scrapers in the world to make. So getting this data from Bright Data was just, you know, amazing. So I, I have a couple of steps that I want to outline first. First of all, go ahead and find interesting data to work with. So, you know, a provider like Bright Data provides a lot of interesting data to work with. Uh, if you want something that's free, then uh, Kaggle.com also has a lot of free data that you can work with, and it's what I generally recommend for, pe for people who are just getting started. Um, then always sync to GitHub. Um, you can sync it to a private repo on GitHub. And although I don't have a video on setting up GitHub, uh, it's a relatively simple process if you're using VS Code, but always sync your results to GitHub. Uh, one, in case your computer for whatever reason is uh, you know, destroyed or whatever, you lose it, you won't lose your code. And two, and probably more importantly, people can see your progress in your project and see, oh, this person's been committing code um, for a while and they've actually worked on this for a while. It's a great progress tracker and a great work tracker. So I recommend syncing to GitHub very, very quickly. So first of all, after we find interesting data, then we're going to go ahead and explore the overall data, and I'll actually show how I do this. Then we'll choose a column or set of columns that are particularly interesting and look for questions inside that um, column. And this is kind of what I like to tell people, right? Um, it, people ask me, like, oh, what's a good idea for a project with, uh, for, like, a data scientist or something, right? And usually I tell them, go find an interesting data set and just, like, start analyzing it and asking yourself questions about that data set. Uh, you'll find how we you, – you naturally find that you are quite curious about certain things and want to explore a specific direction with a column. And that's what a data scientist does. It's a sci – they're scientists, right? Um, their whole job is to uh, test out hypotheses and see if things work or don't work. And if something doesn't work, you've still gained information from that analysis. Then we'll formulate some ideas, and then we'll shortlist our ideas uh, down to just one eventually. And then what you want to do after that is you want to write a good execution plan for one of your ideas. Uh, and a good idea generally has a visual component to it because you want to be able to present your findings to people of a wide array – a wide um, array – of technical skills. Um, you don't want only people who have like, you know, great data science skills viewing your analysis. You would, you know, prefer that your friends and uh, maybe even a boss who's not super technical can understand your analysis. So a visual component makes your analysis very interesting to people who aren't just, you know, coders and developers. Your analysis has to answer some kind of an interesting question. Um, an interesting question, generally speaking, honestly, if it's just something that's not super obvious, it's usually interesting. And then hopefully your demo is interactive. Um, in order to make something interactive, I recommend using Streamlit, and that's what we will be using uh, if you guys decide that you want to see a part two of this video. All right, so finding interesting data to work with, we've already done that. Um, quick tip, don't use the Titanic data set. Um, it's a great data set to like practice your skills on, uh, but I wouldn't create a project that you're going to present to other people using that data set because literally everyone has done that. It's very much the hello world of data science. So this library, this, um, sorry, this directory is already synced to GitHub as you can see over here. So I don't have to worry about that right now. Let's go ahead and explore the overall data. So I'm going to do the standard import OS and import pandas as PD. Uh, pandas is just the library that we use for um, exploring tabular data in Python. The cool thing about this data set actually, and maybe I should show you guys this in a second. Let me see if I can open this up for you guys. You guys will see over here that this data is about 20 gigabytes in size. So it's a large amount of data. And so just going uh, through a large amount of data itself is a skill, and we'll see how we actually end up processing that data in this tutorial. 
So import OS, OS lets us do a bunch of like OS commands to, you know, travel through file directories more easily, import pandas as PD, uh, pandas allows us, it stands for panel data, it allows us to work with tabular data in data science, uh, like in uh, Python. And let's go ahead and read in a data frame. A data frame is just a, you know, two, uh, two dimensional table. Uh, and then let's see, I think this is under the file path is data chunk one JSON, perfect. Oh, whoops, sorry. It should be pd.read underscore JSON. So this data is stored as a, uh, as a JSON. Um, a lot of data that comes from the web is stored as a JSON. I just hit shift enter to go to the next cell. But a lot of data that's stored on the web is stored as a uh, JSON file. And so that's usually how you'll get your data out there. And the reason for that is because uh, JSONs allow you to have data of like hierarchical data um, that has like multiple dimensions to it. Not That's not just two dimensions, for example. So you see that took about 15 seconds to run. Uh, part of that's because I'm running another process in the background and my computer doesn't have like the most RAM. Um, and part of that is because each of these JSONs is about 500 megabytes big. So, you know, they're not tiny. Uh, so we have 30,000 rows, 31 columns, and this is Instagram data, right? So you'll have the account over here, the biography, uh, business address. Looks like we have a couple of columns. In fact, we have so many columns that this triple dot shows up over here, which means that there are more columns than uh, can be reasonably shown. So yeah, looks like we have quite a bit of data in here. So the first thing you always want to do is you want to go ahead and see what even, like what are the columns available to you? Um, I think we might have a little bit too much data over here, which might be eating up some of our RAM. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to limit um, how big our data is. So with a JSON, you can't read in a specific number of rows necessarily. It depends on how the JSON, JSON is formatted. Uh, this one's not formatted in such a way that allows for that. So I'm just gonna do dot .ilock, so in, index, I think it means index location. Um, this is just a way to limit the number of rows we bring in. Let's just bring in 100 rows, and then we'll bring in all of the columns. So that's what this notation does. Bring in zero to 100 rows, and then bring in all the columns. So we're reading in the entire JSON file, but then this test import variable will only store the first 100 columns. So basically we're just getting rid of everything else. Um, so reading it in will take the same amount of time, but any operations we process later on will take less time. There we go. And you'll see we only have 100 rows of data right now. Now let's go ahead and look at all of our columns first. Um, so explore the overall data. That's what that means, right? Like explore the overall data, like get an idea of what you're even looking at. So I know that, let's see, uh, what are the columns? So I will do test import dot columns that will list all of our columns. And it's very important that, you know, you get an overall idea of what you're even looking at. And, uh, oh, I think I was supposed to say columns. Can I stop this process and then restart it? Perfect, let's try this, there we go. I'm not even sure what uh, dot column does. Uh, okay, so, while well, it looks like we have a lot of columns over here, as with most data, most columns are probably not all that useful. Um, when you have a lot of data, right? So we have about 20 gigabytes of data. Um, I know some people will be like, oh, that's nothing, that's not a lot of data. I mean, I have, a, I have a MacBook Pro with eight gigabytes of RAM, like that's a lot of data for me to manage on this thing. Um, I, I would like to actually show you guys how to do stuff on the cloud um, in the future, but uh, unfortunately I'm doing a lot of traveling right now, so I just don't have the time to do that. But it looks like we have quite a few columns. Um, we have account, biography, um, so I'm guessing biography, like on an Instagram page is like, you know, what they write on um, their biography. Uh, business address, JSON, business email, category name. Um, this could be very interesting too and um, analyze uh, followers, following, highlights, ID, is business account. Uh, ooh, posts. So I'm guessing posts over here is like a JSON file, uh, like a JSON inside a JSON of every single post this person has made. If it is, that's probably where like the majority of our data is actually contained. Um, post count, po profile image link. Um, and, and this is how you store image data inside a data frame. You like just link it out to something else, basically. Profile name, timestamp, highlights count, country code. Okay. So I see a couple of columns over here that are pretty interesting. I think that we will go ahead and look at the posts data. So we, we want to keep accounts 
We want to keep posts. Let's go ahead and look at that first uh, posts um, column. So I'm going to go ahead and do test import, and then we'll just type in posts. And okay, so it looks like. I'm going to do a dot reset index. And what that does is that makes it look nice and uh, like a data frame again. And then if I type in drop equals true, then it'll get rid of this index row over here. Oh, whoops. We will leave it as is then. Okay, so let's go ahead and just look at the first row then. So I hit index zero. Ah, uh, interesting. I wonder what could possibly be interesting. Well, let's try this. I'm not exactly sure what's causing that. Okay, cool. This seemed to have done the done, done the trick. Oh, I know what it was. Um, because it's a data frame, I just asked for zero without specifying anything else about it. Um, it should be. I need to. Sp I need to specify. Post that column. And then I need to specify the, the first index, which could just be shortened to removing this dot reset index over here. Or and then I don't need this either. All right. Yes. So it looks like a lot of the data is going to be in this posts column. So it looks like um it's a list. So in, un, inside posts, we have a list, and inside each list, we have a dictionary, right? So let's go ahead and look at the first item in that dictionary. And it looks like we have a caption. Look, oh, so we have a couple of things. So here's a trick I like to use. Um, I copy the dictionary over here, and then I'll create a new file called test.json. So we'll call this one test2.json. And I paste it, and I hit Control s and it should format it. Now, it looks like it didn't format it because JSONs can't have these single quotes over here, right? So I'm just going to hit Control F, and then we're going to find every single single quote, and we'll replace it with a double quote. And then if I save it, then it should format properly. Oh, whoops. It's done something wrong on accident. Single quote, replace with a double quote. There we go. And then hit Control S. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so it looks like basically, okay, it formatted a little bit wonky, but we have a caption, a date time, an image URL, an ID, a location, a URL, and comments. Okay, so, and, and comments is the number of comments on that post, it looks like, not like the specific comments. So it looks like when we got this data scrape, um, we didn't specify we wanted comments. Like, I want to see what people commented on a post. Uh, and so we just get a number of comments in there. Honestly, that's probably good. It would have been way too much data if, like, people's comments were coming in too because um, text data can be quite large. So over here, the useful information I'm seeing, because, given that I don't want to really do, like, an image, I don't want to, like, analyze images and stuff like that, we probably don't need the image URL. Uh, date time is very useful. Caption is very useful. Location is very useful. Um, URL, probably not useful. I don't really need that right now. Comments, that could be useful. Um, location, I could see there being a lot of issues with just like how many locations are available. So yeah. And the ID, I'm guessing this is the individual ID for a post. Cool. Oh, and it looks like, okay, here's something interesting. It looks like we have some hashtags in here, right? So there's some hashtags inside this data. So maybe, maybe here's an interesting use case that we have. We have a use case where we, um, because I, I remember we had this column over here. Uh, where is it? Business category name. Maybe um, we can show the rise and fall of certain hashtags over time per business category name. So let's say, for example, you run a, um, a business of, of some kind, right? Let's just say it's a jewelry store and you run it on uh, uh, Instagram, right? A lot of times what you need to do is you need to categorize different, uh, sorry, you need to like, uh, you know, put your post over there and then that post needs to be uh, hashtagged in a certain way that maximizes your engagement. Uh, oh, and it looks like there's even an average engagement score over here, uh, but this is by the account, not by the user. I mean, not by the post. So what if we created a tool that allowed people to access, um, that allowed people to see the rise and fall of certain hashtags and popularity per business category. So for example, if you like run a jewelry store 
you can see, okay, it looks like uh, in these months, these hashtags are very popular. In these months, these hashtags are less popular. Um, I feel like that's a very useful tool right over there. So maybe we have we build something like that and that's what we do, right? Um, now, you know, you, you can probably tell I formulated this idea a little while ago. Uh, I'm not naturally getting there, but um, this is kind of how you would do a data science project, right? You start thinking of some ideas and then you create an execution plan of some kind. Uh, just to make sure, let's go ahead and see what the business category name column is like and see if that's a column worth analyzing. So I'm going to go do test import. Um, and then we're going to do business category name dot value counts. And what this does, this will give us a list of every category and how many values are in that category. Okay, so yeah, it, it does look like basically everything is categorized. I don't, I, I guess there's one empty column over here. I mean, an empty category over here, but it seems like that's the minority. But this is super cool. It looks like we have some good data over here. And, and you'll see there's only, about, this only adds up to about 100 because I limited the amount of data I'm working with just to make, sure, make this process a lot faster. So I think we actually have a real um, idea over here that we can actually execute on. And so the way I'm going to handle it, right, because we have a massive amount of data we're working with, um, I'm only going to work on one file and I'll work on a limited section of that file and I'll write out all my code. Then I'll go run that code on the entire data set later. So um, our idea, right, let's go ahead and write down what our idea is. So, you know, if you're if you're anything like me, I'm very impatient. Uh, and for me, it's I, I just want to get to coding as fast as possible when oftentimes I would be a lot better off formulating an idea, um, thinking it through planning it out and then executing on it. And I find out that I find that I actually use a lot less time coding when I am actually like formulating out an idea and planning it out prior to actually executing. So what is our idea? Our idea will be allow users to analyze hashtags um, and see their rise and fall in popularity popularity over time. So allow users to analyze hashtags and see their rise and fall in popularity over time in relation to business categories. And the reason I bring this up, right, um, uh, some of this is also informed by just what I know about Instagram. I know that Facebook has really been trying to like push it as kind of the shopping platform. Whether it should be that or not, I don't really know. But for sure, um, one of Instagram's great utilities for people is that it allows them to market their goods to other people. It's it's a, a great storefront for a lot of people. I know people who even if they have like a Depop store or something, uh, Depop for anyone not aware is a very popular secondhand clothing um, marketplace. Um, and it is a great way to – Instagram, like even if they have a Depop account and they sell their clothing over there, they'll, they'll have an Instagram because there's a much better reach over there. Um, and you can even do direct sales through uh, Instagram, which will you know eliminate the middleman and uh, allows you to make more profit on your clothes. So um, Instagram being a business platform, it makes a lot of sense to do business analysis, like analysis on the business on this. And, you know, if the idea is interesting enough, maybe I'll even like release this as a product with uh, uh, bright data where I have them scrape it regular, scrape Instagram regularly to provide me with enough data that where I can like, you know, actually have this be a tool that people can use. Okay, so allow users to analyze hashtags and see their rise and fall in popularity over time in relation to business categories. Okay, cool. Um, this is the shortlisted idea. We'll just go ahead and do this for now. Uh, let's write an execution plan for one of our ideas. Um, so how do we want to write this execution plan, right? So one thing, because we're working with so much data, I want to, um, I, I like to tell people you want to limit the amount of data that you're, uh, pushing through, through your computer as early on in the process as possible. And the reason you want to do that on a local machine is because oftentimes your local machine is not like this, like super robust computer. Um, and it, it, it just has limited throughput. The other reason you might want to do that is if you're running stuff on the cloud, um, you can really rack up a very heavy cloud bill by um, not limiting the amount of data you push through all at once, like um, at any given time. So my general philosophy is you want to work with as little data as possible um, throughout your entire process without losing information. So for us, I think the first thing I'm going to do over here is list out which columns are going to be necessary for us to conduct our analysis. So or actually, even before that, what information is necessary and then what columns um, will support that information that we need. So, um, and then let me go ahead and sync this up to GitHub uh, bef just in case we <laughs> lose our data. Uh, so open an integrated terminal. Okay. So, 
Oh, it looks like I have three terminals going on right now. Okay, so uh, let's see, git add dot, so add all my files, and then git uh, commit, so we'll commit this, and our commit message will be um, video recording code, and then git push, there we go. So everything should be pushed to my GitHub, and it should be on my GitHub right now. Okay, cool. So, um, oh, and I, I did not push the data up there. It's 20 gigabytes of data. Of course, I'm not going to push that to uh, the GitHub. Um, that'll stay on this computer. All right, so what are, let's see. So the question I have for myself, what, what information do we need? Okay, so we need to know the um, hash tags in a post um, we need to know the date a post was posted uh, timestamp maybe we can, we can even get a time later right what else do we need to know we need to know the business category of an account and then we need to know the I'm going to get rid of this too. Not save. Sorry. Hashtags in a post, date a post was posted, business category of account. Um, I think. Well, and then I guess the account name. I think that's about it. That's probably all the information we need, right? So columns that service that info, uh, let's see, above information. Okay, so what column serves that information? So we would need uh, the account column. We need the business category column. And then we need the post column. More specifically, the post column needs to be transformed into the individual caption. I want the caption, uh, the timestamp. Um, so the caption, the timestamp, and, well, more importantly, we need the hashtags, which we get from the captions. Yeah, so we need the caption and the timestamp. I believe that's all we'll need from an individual post, right? So caption, likes might be useful. Let's leave that out for now. I'll come back and analyze that later. Um, one... Sorry, AC turned on, um, and it, it's a really loud AC. Okay, so what was I saying? Um, so we might like to have like the likes and you know maybe even like the location and stuff and, and the number of comments in there. I feel like that would be great information to have because you can kind of tell um, how engaged is this post. We can even create our own little engagement score where we compare the maybe the number of followers someone has versus the number of comments they have. Although the only problem with that is that it doesn't um, – I, I don't know the number of followers they had at the time that this post was made. Maybe that we could get that data in the future. Um, but the reason I'm not going to include that right now is because a major problem that people encounter whenever they do these projects is that they keep increasing the scope so much that they end up accomplishing nothing. It's a big problem I have where I want to do more and more and more to where I, act, I don't actually end up accomplishing anything because I spend so much time just um, – wanting to do more. So I'm very much of the opinion that you want to get just something basic out there um, because once you get that out there and you show it to people, then they may point out some very obvious problems that you just didn't see yourself, right? So that is exactly why we don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and do our... Let's go ahead and do our analysis over here. So let's see. Oh, whoops. Wrong piece of code. I think this is enough data. And then let's see. What is the grain that we want our data in? The grain refers to... The grain refers to like what level of detail you have in your data, right? So are you, um, is it at the individual account level, which is what this data currently is at, right? Is that the individual post level? What are we doing over here, right? Um, I think the final data will have to look something along the lines of hashtag so the name of the hashtag um date uh we can get the time later but let's work with dates right now because date time explodes your data so we'll just work with date for now um potentially even better would be like 
date week. Uh, I want to reduce the grain and then, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my code in such a way that I could easily like make it more, make the data a lot more dense, but we'll start off with like very, like a very high level grain and then move from there, right? So hashtag date week, then let's go to um, probably the account that posted would be very useful or maybe not the account. What we want to do is the business category. And then we need account. So basically we need a count of the number of times a hashtag has shown up in a given week. Uh, we'll use ISO week just because that's very easy. Um, ISO, International Standards Organization, uh, for a given business category. So that's that's what our analysis is going to be. So basically how do we get to that point, right? Um, we, Given our data, it's very obvious that posts, so like this, this post thing over here, right? This is going to be the hardest thing to unfurl, right? So... What we're going to do is we need we need to expand this and we need to extract these hashtags from this, right? And then from there, we need to go ahead and attach. Well, we need, yeah, so we, we'll need to pull the hashtag and the date week from each post. We'll need to attach the business category and then we'll do the count later. So I think... There are kind of two sections to this, right? We need to go through every single row. I think the fastest way to do this would be to go through every single row of our data set, um, save the account, save the uh, business category, and then basically create a data frame where we um, attach each post and all of its hashtags to that business category and to its week. So let's go ahead and kind of like write out those steps of execution and get something really quick on the board. So... Uh, steps of execution. So we are going to iterate through each row of the data, um, save the business category. Um, then what do we want to do? We want to expand uh, oh, sorry. We want to iterate through all posts. And we want to extract the hashtags. Extract the date time. Convert to week. We might as well do that over here. Um, make sure this is changeable. So basically, maybe one day I do want to go and like do it at the day level, um, in which case I, I would like to um, make sure I'm easily able to change that. But for now, because, you know, I'm working on a computer with limited resources and I don't want you guys just, you know, waiting for my computer for two hours to finish something, uh, let's just go ahead and do it at the week level. So extract the daytime, convert to week, make sure this is changeable, and then we will go ahead and do a, let's see. Create a new row in final data frame with all of the above information. Okay, so I think we have a couple of great steps over here. Let's try executing it. So I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, let's say, we'll call this final data frame. So this will be a list. So that's a list in Python. And then let's see, so for row in... And then we want to go through the length. Um, so I want to iterate through every single row. And actually, there's this great Python function called like iter rows. Maybe that makes sense to use. Iterate over data frame rows as index series pairs. Okay, so. I've never actually used iter rows before. Let's see what that looks like. So I think row equals next. Okay, so df equals pd data frame. Okay, row equals next. Interesting. And then the data frame's name is test import. So 
So let's go ahead and do that. And then I guess do I if I do like two, does it change? Hmm. It arose pandas. I'm not really understanding how this works. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it looks like it's just uh, I can just use a for loop. So we'll do test import over here. So for index row, print row C1, row C2. Oh, okay, interesting. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So basically it'll it'll give us all the contents of the row. So what I could say is I could say print row account. Okay, okay. So basically it's going through every single row and it like gives us the row and then we can do stuff with it. Okay, so this is exactly what I'm looking for. So we do want to go through every single row and we'll say account equals... Um, row account, because remember we wanted to save that. One thing I just realized, right, we probably should limit our uh, testing data. That or We should probably limit the data that we're iterating through just so we don't have like, a, you know, when we reduce the amount of data we're working with, the computer works faster, right? So let me go ahead and get all the columns over here and then just remove the ones we're not interested in. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, so we want account, we don't want biography, we don't want the business address, we do want the business category name. We don't want the business email, external URL, FBID, followers, following, highlights, ID. We don't want any of this. We do want posts. We don't want post count. Uh, we don't need timestamp. Highlights count, country code. Country code could be interesting in the future, uh, but let's leave it out for now. Uh, post hashtags, bio hashtags, country enum, category name, change log, full name is private, maybe country code. Okay, so we'll remove all of that. I think we only need these three columns. So... We will say test import equals test import, and we will say it equals that. So test import equals test import account, business category name, posts. Um, and then let's go ahead and iterate through this. Perfect. The account will be row account. The category, so we'll call it business category, will equal row, and then we'll just get this over here. And then what else do we need? We need to do, let's remove this. So yeah, iterate through every row of the data, save the business category, um, an account. Well, do we? Oh, actually, I guess we didn't want to save the account, right? So we don't need that, actually. Save the business category. It iterate through all posts, right? So we'll say, let's say there's no length in post. Like, like there, there are no posts on an account. Uh, we need to account for that, right? So if length of row post, so we're going to the post column. We're, we're checking that the there's at least one post is greater than zero. Uh, do this. So, you know, pass is what you use in Python when you want to just temporarily put something in uh, somewhere um, and you'll come back and fix it. Else, continue. And then continue just means go to the next loop. Don't worry about this one. And over here, this is where we'll add all of our logic. Um, so for a given post, what we need is we need to extract the hashtags, right? So... We'll say the caption equals, oh, sorry, no, I need to start iterating through this, right? Okay, so for um, post in posts, 
because remember, if I remove this over here, each post in an account is displayed by its caption. Sorry, each post in account is like a part of a list, right? So we need to iterate through every single one. And we need the caption and we need the date time. Those are the two things we need. Two pieces of information. So for post in posts, um, oh, and then posts equals. So for post in row posts, that's what it should be. Um, post caption. So we'll say this equals a caption. So caption equals post caption. And then we will say date equals post date time. I, or is it date time or is it timestamp? So if we look over here, I see date time. Perfect. So it's a date time. So we have the caption, we have the post. Now we need to take that caption and we need to extract a hashtag from it. We're gonna use something called regex, which stands for regular expressions, and is a standard way you parse out strings in most languages. So it this sounds like a problem that should be solved. So we'll say regex for pulling hashtags. As you can see, I've already searched this up. Um, and I'm gonna guess, oh wait, we don't need this one because I don't need mentions. Okay, so I'm gonna just use the code that I uh, have. I already had written out for this. Re is how you uh, get regexes inside Python. So import re, and then we're gonna read out find all. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna look for that hash symbol first, and then up any any word characters, right? So I think this includes numbers and alpha, like alphanumerics, basically. So uh, letters and numbers. Uh, and so any any number of them, basically, until you know, you hit something that's not that, such as either a space or a another hash or something. Um, so we need to find all of them inside the caption. So this is the regex pattern. And then this is the string that we're searching for that in, right? So we'll call this the hash tag list. And then uh, what we need to do is if Extract the, okay, extract all the hashtags. That's what, that's what we've done. And then what we need to do is we need to take all the hashtags and each one will be an individual row. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll do this again. If the length of hashtag list is greater than zero, because if it's zero, then there's nothing to do, uh, then do something. Else we will continue and the length of the hashtag list is going to be, oh, so if it's greater than zero, then for um, hashtag in hashtag list. So for hashtag and hashtag list, we need to, sorry, if the length of the hashtag list is greater than zero, yeah, that makes sense. For hashtag in hashtag list, so we're going through every single hashtag, we, we're, we're going to create a row, um, so we'll, we'll call this final row in our data frame because you can take a list of dictionaries and then combine them all together to make a data frame, right? So we'll call this data frame that. The columns that we want to have in it are um, the hashtag name, the date time. We'll convert it to a week later. Um, yeah, the hashtag name, the date time, and the – what else did we want? Business category. So business cat, and then the count, which will come later when we aggregate all of our data. So the final row, so we'll say final row hashtag, and that will equal the hashtag that we just extracted. And then final row date time. This will equal our date time, which we pulled over here. So that's date, and then final row business category will equal the business category, which we pulled out all the way over here, BUS cat. 
So we have a triple nested for loop. Um, this is probably not the best way to deal with this um, because when you nest for loops like this, you tend to create very messy code that's not very readable. But what I really want to do is I just want to get something out there and then from there we can go, go back and improve it. Um, there's an old Russian proverb though, right? Uh, there's nothing more permanent than a temporary solution. So we'll see if I actually go back and correct this, but let, let's go ahead and just do it and see what happens. So we've created this uh, dictionary called final row, which will be formatted something like this, right? It'll be, um, it'll say hashtag, and then it'll have like blah, and then it'll be like date time, and it'll be a Unix timestamp, so something like that. And then it'll have a business category, which will be something along the lines of, um, I don't know. Uh, jewel. I was trying to spell jewels. Um, I don't know tech. Let's just say tech. And I, I, I actually don't know how to spell it without uh, without autocorrect. Um, cool. So I think that's what we have, right? And then we will go ahead and append everything to our final output list. So then what we'll do is we'll do final output list dot append final row. I think, I think this is good code. And then I'm going to go down here. I'm going to type in final output list. See what happens. Cool. I think it did exactly what we wanted it to do. Then if I surround this with PD dot data frame, there we go. So we have every hashtag, the date it was posted, and then the business category that it represents. Now, why do we have thirteen? Why do we have thirteen thousand rows? Oh, okay, okay, because they went through every single post and every single um, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, it went it went through every single post and it went through every single business category. Yeah, so now, kind of going back to what I said about like wanting to limit the amount of data we're working with, we should probably group everything by the week and by the business category right now. So let's go ahead and try that. So first of all, I need to convert date times to week, right? So the way we do that, so we'll, we'll call this our temp data frame, or we'll call this our temp output. So our temp output is that. And then we are going to say that this is, um, we're gonna create a new, let's see, week ag, we'll call this week ag. And that'll equal temp output, date, time, and then we do um, this pd.date, or to date time. Function or method, which is just like a magic method. And then I'll show you guys how this works. So pd.to date. So if you work in analytics, you'll know that dates are just like really annoying to work with. Um, think, okay, yeah, unit. So we're using something called a Unix timestamp over here. So I'll show you guys what that is in a second. So you guys notice that, like, you see this date over here, right? It's like some weird number. So a Unix timestamp is just a really simple way uh, to represent dates and times as a, as a human, uh, as, as something that's easy to read for a computer. So basically it's the number of seconds past the Unix epoch, which is January 1st, 1970. Um, I forgot exactly why they picked 1970. I think it has something to do with like the first, like the first Unix computers that they were created somewhere in the in, around 1970s. Um, so you'll see this is the exact time and date that we have. Now we only care about the week, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do temp output week ag. This will convert everything. The units are seconds. And then let's see, how do you um, pandas aggregate to we or convert to ISO week? So ISO week is, I, I think ISO week start on Monday, I think. Uh, it doesn't really matter because I'm not like, this isn't like a business where it's like super important that we get like the exact date, right? Or sorry, the exact um, week format, right? Okay, so it looks like this would work for us. So we'll go ahead and try that. So dot dt, that's how you access the date time functions inside pandas um, for, you know, like, so it's like dot, like your row dot dt string. I, I think this means string from time, sturf time, uh, and it'll convert it to this. So 
Then if I do temp output, you'll see that we have our week over there. So, cool. Looks like, yeah, our year and our week. If you have the year and the week number, then you know that, that's basically what we're looking for over here. So then let's go ahead and do a um, group by, that way we limit our data as quickly as possible. And I wanna group it by the hashtag and the business category. And yeah, so the hashtag, the business category, and then the week ag. And then we can just take the date time, for example, and then use that as our count. And then if we go ahead and do a dot reset index, it'll clean this output up. And that's our data. So it crunched down to about 9,000 rows. So we'll call this the final output. Perfect. So now all we would do, so, so you guys kind of saw the method we went through over here, right? We found an interesting data set, right? Then we went ahead and explored the data set at the high level, right? What are the individual columns? What do they look like? What do they do? Um, then we found columns with a lot of information inside them, right? So the posts, posts column, that has a ton of information inside it. Then I kind of thought about a use case, right, um, of like, what, what could we actually use this for? So we're, we're creating a hashtag explorer. Uh, and let me, let me know if you guys want to see like a following to this video where I like actually, like I actually create the explorer. I'm, I, I really want to do that. It sounds super exciting, um, but we're hoping that this video gets enough views to uh, make a video about that. Um, and then here's the thing. You guys saw how quickly I wrote that code, right? So, to, you know, I've explored the data and everything before. That's the first time I've written that code. Um, there were a couple of snippets I already had written now, but I've written, I wrote all this code, like, basically live right now. Um, and that's because I made sure to write out the steps of execution for my analysis, um, and I made sure to reduce the amount of data that I needed, um, or the amount of data I was working with to just what I needed. And uh, we wrote error-free code the first time, and that's kind of how you are supposed to go about like analyzing data. So now you guys were asking, how do I create like a project, Shashank? This is more or less how you do it. So um, the, what we would do next is what I would probably go ahead and like turn this all into like a function or something and then put that in and then just basically like ram all of our data through that. So I'm going to create a follow-up video to this where I kind of show you what actually happens when we decide to do all that. But uh, let me know what you guys think about this style of video. Did you guys like it? Um, do you want to see more of it? Uh, and I hope that this gives you some ideas of how to start your own data science projects. But uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Thank you guys so much for attending. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you're interested in more content like this. Um, I genuinely enjoy making content like this. And uh, thank you so much to Bright Data for sponsoring today's video. Have a great day, guys.